so what I told you was true from a certain point of view. Hey, this is Jedi Johnson, 22. And uh, you may remember me from my, uh, my New Year's Eve video or my New Year's video. Well, after that, uh, I had to lose the, I had to lose the hat. Um, my, my wife wouldn't, wouldn't let me wear it. Uh, so she, she said, uh, you can't wear that. It looks ridiculous. So, uh, so I threw it away. So I, I, I didn't have a hat on for a while. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm getting show tunes in my head. I'm, I'm walking around singing Grease 2 soundtrack. Grease 2. That's not, not the good one. No, no. Grease 2. You ever seen that? So it was terrible. So I had to make me an, a new hat. And I was walking my dog. And, and I don't know. Next thing I know, dude, I'm right here. And I'm on Tales of the Dark Side, brother. Let's get it going. And welcome to Tales from the Dark Side. I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if you saw it, but we definitely have a special guest today. Hey, one of our favorites, a guy who's been with us since the beginning. To be honest with you, the first person that ever hit me up and said, you know, your show's not so bad, man. I think I might keep watching it. Jedi Johnson. Jedi Johnson, what's going on, buddy? Hey, what's happening? Great to be here, man. Thanks for... Uh... Thanks for inviting me. Looking forward to uh, chilling out with you guys and rapping a little bit. That's cool. We're going to talk to Jedi Johnson about some very interesting things. We're also going to put in there a little bit maybe of uh, three characters in the original series that might be might be time to pick up those books cheap. Hey, my co-pilot's here. He's done ripping off people's arms and beating over the head with it. Solo Wookie, say hi. What's happening, everybody? Glad to be here. And Leaky Trooper, new camera, new computer. Same old trooper. What's up, Leaky? Not too much. Glad to be back, guys. Welcome, hey. Jedi. Welcome. <laughs> so it was funny. We saw the Jedi Johnson video. We really like him. He has been a part of our family. You know what I mean? He's been part of the, the Star Wars clique for a while now. Um, and I've been talking to him a little bit afterwards. I said, hey, look, do you want to come on? He said, yes. I said, how about when you come on, we'll talk a little bit about how you got involved with Star Wars, where it was early on, um, and how you got back into it. Because I think there's a lot of people – who were into it pretty hard, especially the comics, and then left. I know for a fact that Jedi goes back out and uh, gets the hardcovers now to cover our, some of the gapping from what he used to have. But So, Jedi, when, when was it originally for you? When did you really get into Star Wars? Uh, so, I guess I was, um, it was right after the release. So, I guess I, I would have been about uh, eight, maybe nine. Uh, I didn't know anything about any sci-fi, nothing like that. Uh, I had an older cousin who, uh, uh, he, I don't say he was a nerd, but he, he was into sci-fi and stuff, you know, and and, and he, he he got all the little cousins together and he was just telling us about this movie he had seen. And, uh, you know, we're just sitting there with our, our jaws just dropping, like we can't believe what he's telling us. You know, we never, we can't fathom anything like that. And uh, so, I mean, you know, me and my older brother, we, we talked our, our, our mom and uh, taking us to see it and, and we were just blown away. And uh, I, I don't know how many times I saw it exactly. It was, it was probably more than two, I'm sure. Uh, so that's how, that, that was my introduction to, to Star Wars. And then uh, God, I think every Christmas after that, uh, at least until I was probably out of uh, junior or not junior high, but uh, uh elementary school was it was a star wars christmas uh so that, that's how that was my initial introduction did you uh, did you originally yeah. start getting into the comics too or was the comics something that came around later for you uh i can't remember if the comics were like a christmas present or if me and my brother saw it at the uh convenience store it, it was i'm sure the ones we we had initially were probably you know out of the whitman three pack you know probably a reprint and uh we started, we started reading that and we would share it, you know, and uh, we read those things to the, the covers fell off. I, I'm being, I mean, literally not that it took a lot, but I mean, we read those and then we started, we started going into, uh, you know, beyond uh, issue six into some of the other stuff that is, uh, it's no longer, or I don't know if it was ever canon, but, uh, but yeah, we, that was just to this day uh, and 
I'm, I'm a sucker for the Bronze Age one through six. I am. It doesn't matter if it's uh, the, uh, you know, the first prints, the reprints, the diamonds. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of them. My uh, my prize one is the uh, the 35, 35 cent variant. Uh, I have I have two number ones uh, that, uh, like I said, if I see them and, and I think that they're a decent price, I'm going to get them. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I said I'm the same way. I'm always like that. So you were in the service for a little bit too. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Um, did you out there, were you still collecting and buying or were you, did you take a little bit of a break? I know it's hard. A lot of people uh, moved away from comics when they started getting into like their twenties and trying to get laid and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was me. Uh, probably high school. I actually kind of got out of, uh, away from star Wars, got into like heavy metal, you know, or hair metal, glam rock, whatever you'll call it, quiet riot, you know, all that, <laughs> uh, and didn't really follow Star Wars too much, and uh, you know, then joined the joined the Navy, um, and then uh, got married, had kids, and where I kind of got reintroduced to Star Wars was probably like a lot of people with the uh, was it the '96 re-release? I might be off a year or so there. You're right. Uh, and by by that time, I had uh, I had two sons. I was married and had two sons, and the uh, my youngest son was too young to know, but my oldest son was about four years old. And of course I had to take him to see it on the big screen. And I think, you know, he, he liked it because, you know, daddy liked it. I think he, his enthusiasm was from watching me, you know, just kind of love it. And, uh, you know, after that, uh, he, he's, he got into it, uh, growing up because, you know, we'd go to Toys R Us. Well, where's daddy going? Daddy's going to the Star Wars aisle, right? And so he would follow me in the Star Wars aisle. And he, you know, he, he was in other stuff too, Power Rangers and stuff, but he had, a, he had a love for, uh, Star Wars still does to this day. He's a grown man. Also he's in the Navy now. And, uh, yeah, we call each other a couple of weeks or a couple of times a week. And yeah, we can do some heavy debates on, in, in Star Wars. Uh, back and forth. He's he's a stubborn son of a gun, so it's hard. Yeah. For me. I well, have to reference. I have to reference Marco a lot. He's like, "Who's that guy?" I'm like, "Well, he's he's the guy, man." What's your feelings on Rise of Skywalker, though? Uh, <laughs> yep, you just touch a sore spot. We see it. Yeah, no, uh, I, I know the feeling. I got a couple kids too, and like, uh, yeah, arguing with them over what they think and what they know is probably the difference. I hope in '96 you did inform him that Han did shoot first. Cause that's the most important thing to remember because that 96 thing. It's the only time I've all only yelled out in a, in a theater is when that <laughs> happened. And look, I'm sorry to ruin it for people, but if they didn't know now they know Han always shot first. Um, but that's cool. So then you got back into it with him and taking him. That's a lot. That's we well, see it a lot. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. something we can bond our kids with us and stuff like that. And they do, they start telling you, what you know about stuff. You know what I mean? Like they will get into yeah. about Star Wars. It's just, you know, what, it was beyond comics, though, when I was a kid. I mean, I know uh, we like to talk about comics, but, man, we had all the action figures. At one at one time, I think me and my brother had all the action figures. Uh, and uh, like we were talking the other the Darth day, Darth Vader Marco, case? Uh, did you have the Darth I Vader did, case? I did not have the Darth Vader case. You know, we, uh, you know, my mom did it the best she could. She was a single mm -hmm. mom on a teacher's salary. And uh, so she got us the stuff uh, that we could. Me and my brother would collect Coke. You know, Coke bottles and trade them in for a, a nickel, and we'd say, save up, you know, three fifty or whatever it was at Walmart or whatever. But then, uh, you know, we didn't have enough money for the play sets and all the, you know, the stuff you see. So, uh, yeah, I was telling you that. Uh, so, you know, we were we're kids, man, and we would get old shoe boxes, and we would cut up the stuff, and we would make our own play sets out of these shoe boxes. And of course, my favorite character back then was Chewbacca. So Chewbacca had his own shoebox ship and you know my brother han had, had his and had some cousins and but i'm gonna tell you my my shoebox ship was was badass man i had a disco in that in that thing and yeah there's there were some bedrooms you know it right so yeah, right. I, I don't want to talk about you know we, we were we were adolescent boys so right uh and then uh yeah it was just we made we just had our imagination 
just went crazy. You know, we, we play outside. We didn't have the blasters. We would look for sticks and stuff that looked like <laughs> blasters and, and, and lightsabers and stuff, man. And it was just, oh, we had a great time. And, you know, as, as, as you know, jumping back to my, my kids, uh, of course, at Toys R Us, you know, they had, they had the real blasters, right? The plastic ones that made the noise and, and the lightsabers that made the noise. So I may, I wanted them to have all that. And sometimes I wonder if I kind of robbed them of some of that imagination, but you know, it was for me probably more than them. Man. I, was about to say, I thought it was cool. Daddy was, daddy was lightsaber champion. Yeah. There's no mercy. I don't care how old you are. No. I don't care. So John, <laughs> quick, you quick, step quick, up and for you. Down. the EI so, uh, blasters they have at Toys R Us. Those are the ones we just modify and carry around in the 501st because they're they're pretty screen accurate. So they they came a long way with them toys. I had I remember one time my son had the uh, I mean I think it was the red Han, it was like a red Han Solo blaster mm -hmm. and uh, he, yeah he loved that. I wish I had another one. I may have to look for one now. That I'm thinking about it. Mm, they're pricey. Those ones, yeah. They, uh, there was an original blaster too that wasn't. That was a screen accurate blaster too that gets pretty expensive. We didn't get it either. That's kind of how we were talking about. Is like, yeah, we did all this back and forth, like making lightsabers out of constructs and like just whatever you could do to get it done. And it's just cool because like a lot of times you get to hear throughout this community the same story, right? Like a lot of us came through the same thing. And I think I think you were talking about Walmart. We had the blue light special out here, which. You got what you got as far as figures go and, and that type of stuff, which is kind of cool to hear that it's not just yours. You know, I mean, that it seems like that was a good thing with parents. Like parents knew that it to just it didn't matter. Just get it for them, whatever, and it, it made the Christmas. So that's really cool. That's why I wound up with 15 power droids. <laughs> I that every year you pray to God that mom and dad or Santa – have finished off that roll of wrapping paper because I don't care how old you are. You can be 80 years old. That Christmas wrapping paper tube yes. instantly becomes a lightsaber. <laughs> yes. Everybody. Oh, yeah. it, it, it yeah. is, yep. If you've Nailed only it. heard of Star Wars and never seen a movie, it still becomes a lightsaber. Yeah. It's uncanny. And they only have five second lifespans, one or two wax, and those things just fold over, you know, a little limp. <laughs> that didn't stop us because no, originally we would try working. to tape we try to tape, tape lights onto it. Yeah, we try to tape a light onto it. So you get about one whack with the light and then it goes sideways. And then after that, you take it because somebody obviously would hit some I have a shit uh, a bunch of brothers. So like somebody would, you know, hit somebody in the ear or the face or something, and then <laughs> It's gone. So then everybody's just whacking each other with them until they fall apart, which you could probably, it's like a Tootsie Roll pop, man. How many whacks does it take to get it to the center? <laughs> the roll to break. That's it. And it's still, once it's broke, you don't care. Then it's just, all right, I already broke it. I might as well finish it off. Right. And my so little cousin true. never got his. So we just started unrolling the toilet paper and he had a little mini one. <laughs> the Yoda saber. The so, Yoda saber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, I, I don't want to ramble on about it, but yeah, so actually, you know, my son, you know, my son grew up too, so like me, he went through his phases, and um, like I, like I was mentioning, Marco, we were in Rhode Island. I was actually stationed in Rhode Island. I was still active duty, and and uh, I thought it would be cool to go to one of the cons up at Providence, and uh, I went there and saw, you know, saw the Star Wars stuff, and I, I just popped in my head. I'm like, you know, I'm going to get one through six again, and didn't know anything about uh, at the time the reprints and you know all all this and that the Whitmans. I didn't know I didn't know what I had as a kid. I do now, but I, I didn't know uh, at that time. And uh, you know, it just the honesty of the of the the the, the comic book sellers was uh, God bless them because they were straight up with me, and I ended up getting first prints. Uh, actually, I had a I got a first print number two that actually ended up getting graded a nine six. I was happy about that. And, wow. That's nice. um. Yeah, well, it wasn't worth as much back then. It, it just took off just recently, as you know. And uh, yeah, that's one of my pet peeves. I, I, I lobbied for for issue number two for a long time, and people just didn't want to. They're just like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, you just don't know the value. What's in that issue number two? So, Chewbacca, man, come on. Yeah, right. First, yeah, no, I mean, two's good. There's a couple in that first run that are, like you said, the first ones are really great. There's a lot of fun stuff in those, and. Early on, you know, that's kind of too where I, we were talking about before and even like at WonderCons and stuff like that. There was, there's been some good 
honest dealers in my area that really helped out for all the years. And I think sometimes it's just overrated. And even so I was just having a conversation about one of them today with another guy that knows them. And it's like, you just got to Sometimes you got to remember what industry we're in, right? Like we're, 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 we're dorks. I, I don't care how cool you think you are. We like star Wars. We like something sci-fi. That was not like you said earlier, it wasn't cool when we were kids really. Right. So like some of the people have been around for a while, a little interesting, but they, the good ones will give you the tips of what to have what's really cool. And, and I hope we kind of do that in the show too, is kind of tell you what's cool out there. And if you like it, grab it. And if you don't, well then grab something else. Speaking of weird stuff in those early runs, that's pretty cool. We were talking about too, like we know a lot of the main characters that are in that, but like what's kind of maybe a character that we would like to see come back into the universe. And uh, then I big surprise you picked this character. Jackson. Yeah, so Jackson, the Jackson. Oh boy, Jackson. Yeah. All right. So Jackson number eight is his first appearance. Uh, I, I put up some slides for you. We could do his intro real quickly. He is here. You go. This is him when he first comes in. Look at those eyes. The art is great. I really like this because uh, this guy cut in front of line them. And if you know me, then you know what I think about people who cut in front of people in line. And then here you go, Jedi. You can explain this one for him. Well, he didn't. He didn't. Uh... Jackson is uh he doesn't he's he's quick witted he's but he's got a quick temper too and uh, yeah he doesn't take any crap and uh, it, a lot of times it doesn't take a lot to to set him off and he often responds with violence uh, when he feels slighted or or insulted uh, and I, that's what you're seeing here is uh, he just yeah he wasn't he wasn't taking it so you requested one picture in the book so I'll let you uh, describe what this picture is well. Um, so Jackson, uh, if I, I'll, I'll go back a little bit, if you'll allow me to. So, right. so Jackson is, uh, he, he's one of three, uh, baby rabbits. Uh, he's from, uh, he's from what? Co Coachella, not Coachella, mm -hmm. but Coachella prime. Uh, and, uh, he was always kind of the wild one. And, um, that's a short so litter, by the way, short litter. One of them is a short first. It was. I mean, that's make, make a point out of that for some reason. I don't know why, but short litter. Go ahead. Yeah. So he's uh, he he wanted he wanted to get out and I guess you know kind of see the see the galaxy. And so we'll fast forward. You know, he left home. Blah blah blah. He had to steal a ship uh, to do that. Blah blah blah. I tried as he tried to be a mercenary for a bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe he just didn't like like that or whatever. To, uh, so later he bought his own ship and he christened it, christened it the, come on, rabbit's foot. Of course he did. Right. So, uh, the rabbit's foot was not lucky. However, it was always kind of breaking down and, and, and needing repairs. And, uh, so that's when we, that, that's when enter a shirtless Han Solo, which was the, the picture, uh, there he is. And, uh, so, Han is uh, trying to put together a team because uh, he got he got his his reward money stolen from him, and he's uh, the mold for He Man and the Masters of the Universe. <laughs> I was curious. I was uh, yeah yeah. There was a lot of like I mean Han looked buff in this. There were some some really nice looking women in these <laughs> in these comics too. So uh, yeah, no wonder I had a couple of them. But anyway, uh, he. Uh, Han is interviewing and, uh, you know, he finally, uh, gets, a gets a couple, you know, that he likes the porcupine guy and whatnot. And as you saw before, uh, Jackson wanted to get in there and this guy tried to cut in front of him and he wasn't having it. So I guess he, uh, you know, he makes, he makes the team, the star hoppers of what's it, Ab Abduba three or something. Yeah. It's yeah. the name of the book too. Star hoppers of Abdul three. Hoppers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course it's hoppers. Right. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> so then, you know, they have some adventures with Han, you know, they, they repel the, the cloud riders and they fight a big monster that some, some shaman raises up and stuff. And, uh, so yeah, et cetera, et cetera, adventure, adventure. He, he made the credits and he fixed up the rabbit's foot, 
really good. He had shields. He had advanced weapons. You know, he had a rabbit's foot hanging from the rear view. And I just made that up. He didn't really do that. But so, I mean, but it was a sharp, it was a sharp, uh, Keep it, up. Was a sharp, sharp <laughs> it was a sharp ship. Now it was no Millennium Falcon. And I think he would even admit that it was no Millennium Falcon, but it was, it was a good ship. So, uh, so, you know, adventure, adventure, adventure. He ends up pissing off some dude named Valance somehow. And uh, so they have a space fight. And then that fine ship that I just bragged about a minute ago got shot down. <laughs> and it, But it has a soft landing. I don't think anybody gets hurt. And Jackson and his friends, they go hide in the tall grass. And, you know, because that's what rabbits do. They hide in the grass. And then... You know, they kind of did a little guerrilla warfare, maybe taking these guys out. And a herd of banthas runs through and tramples a lot of Valance, Valance crew. And, and the star hoppers win. And Valance escapes. And then Jackson continues his smuggling career, and, as far as I know. Because uh, uh, that was, just, you know, that was, I think, issue 16. And we really don't see him again in uh, any of the uh, original 107s. Yeah, uh, and then he, he shows up later in some uh, some stuff, but uh, and, and we'll get to those yeah, Jackson, but yeah, so so what he was talking about too, like one of the crew members you see her on the left, she is not a um, she's not a street <clears throat> street walker, she actually dresses like that all the time and is part of his <laughs> crew pretty much the crew that Han hired. The kid on the way right goes by the name of Star Killer, that's not his actual name. We'll get into Valance a little real quick in a second because he's hey, really. That picture real quick. I have a question here. What was it about Marvel Comics and the pom pom go go girls and the animals like Rocket Raccoon and Jackson Rabbit in the late seventies? It was like yeah. they were really doing some some funny stuff at the Marvel uh, Comics things back then. They were. It is like uh, cartoons where they're uh, four kids, but there's a lot of adult jokes in it. Same with some of these books right here. And they have interesting stories. Now, I didn't think Jackson would have taken off that much, but as Jedi was not, uh, saying, he actually has made a resurgent lately. This book is starting to pick up, but you can still find it. I saw it so for four dollars. I saw somebody pick it up the other day. Well, had Rocket you know, Raccoon, Groot, you know, all of that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's the same type of character. It was like the same type of raccoon. For, for there, a long time, Jackson was not a beloved character. A lot no. of people were not very happy about Jackson. Yeah. Well, because kind of, of how he was talking in the book. Well, not just that. You had you did have that go-go girl, whatever. I mean, she's only wearing a bikini the whole time and part yep. of the crew. She's with them all the time. You know, some of the other stuff that was going on, and we'll get into it later. But we did want to show a couple of the other books that aren't so, you know, number eight is pretty affordable. Even if you get the if you get the newsstand, if you get the the regular direct edition, it's still pretty affordable. These, and on the other hand, them, finding them in good grade is another. It's one of those. Well, covers. that's another issue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those covers are not easy to find in high grade. Of stuff was red, but then, yeah. even with that, you could still find it. Try to find the book on the left. The book yeah. on the left is Vader Down Number One. It was supposed to be like the one in four thousand ninety nine um, instead of variant. It was kind of a rip because DC was doing like a one in five thousand, I think, something like that, and they got it out first. Scoop. Yeah, it's tough to get it. There's not a lot of copies of it. I'll tell you that much. And most of them been sold at one time, and people aren't letting them go. So, um, you know, I mean, locally we had one of these copies laying around, and uh, what's his name down there? I wonder if I'm correct. I think he had one down there at uh, hmm. Wonder World Comics hmm. and sold it. Um, the one on the right. I, you see this every once in a while. There's a, by the way, there's a colored version of both of these, a little bit less rare. Uh, the Star what Wars did they come out, Marco? What year were these? Uh, it had to be 2015. Was that it? Oh, okay. So not that long ago. No, no, it wasn't that long ago. Somewhere around there, 2015 ish. Because it's Star Wars 1, 2. So it was when Disney first took over. There's a variant for that. Obviously, there's a thousand variants for Star Wars 1. This one's a little bit different. It's called the Party Variant. Oh, you know who sold one on the left? Uh, it's um, Z Zardesky, the guy that does the art. He actually had one and did a charity auction. I think it went for like 4K or something like that. It's ridiculous how expensive yeah. that is. I occasionally see that thing pop up on eBay when I'm messing around, and it's it's always at least 3000 or something. Yeah, I think 3000 is going, yep, going right for that book. Uh, the one on the right, however, is the, ske the black and white sketch for the party cover. You can find the color in that one still too every once in a while if you're lucky. So look out for it. Both are very cool books, but both are kind of up there. 
they did they did besides those after those covers were so popular they started bringing them back but they brought them back as you know we've talked about before probably tales of adventure he shows up in tales of adventure um what 2018 the first time that's the luke cover then he starts making his covers appearance 2000 and um 19 and if you didn't go for the momoka and you went for the other 2020 this year it's him and dangar on the front he's actually in stories in all three his first technical appearance in canon would probably be star wars adventures one there's some debate because he might actually be in the background of like i don't know force awakens number three and something else i mean who knows if it's him or not but those are usually the ones that people are looking for. Those are pretty still affordable. Except for now, people, be careful, because people are going through and just wiping out all Star Wars books, no matter what the cover is. But if you can get in there early enough, maybe you can still find some of these if you're a big fan of Jackson. It's a great character. I do think there's a lot of potential there, especially with him being in all the adventure stuff. He also might have shown up showed up in, the, uh, in one of the little mini cartoons, the Forces of Destiny thing, supposedly. He showed up in it. Okay. The next character that Jedi already kind of mentioned is kind of one of my favorite. I love it, and I love that we redid it. And we've kind of talked about this guy before, Leaky, his Valance. He, I actually just picked one of these books up in like minty, minty fresh for like under ten dollars, I think, last week. And I just saw somebody once again. He was at that show where he's picking them up for four dollars a piece. Picked this up for four dollars. If you see this, pick it up, man. He's a great character. He's a bounty hunter. The reason why he was going after the reason why he ended up running into Jackson and everything else, kind of Jedi alluded to it, was because that kid Star Killer, they thought he was it was a miscommunication that he was Luke Skywalker, and he obviously wasn't. Um so there was a little before he started fighting Vader in this series, he was actually bounty hunting, trying to get out Luke Skywalker, and he thought he was Luke Skywalker. Uh, I I think cover I because Han Solo looks less like Donny Osmond, more like Lee Hordsley. So I love how in the upper left-hand corner it says still only 35 cents. Now we're on Star Wars 16, and the trial period of, of some of the first books was obviously Star Wars number one. So somewhere, I mean, still only 35 cents, but it was 15 books ago that they just started trying. So it tells you that there's another price hike right in there yeah well it's a little bit over a year and you gotta remember it's regional too so like yeah yep yep is regional too so like some of them were at 35 cents but either way the price of other books were going up so they're still doing the still only 35 cents to compete with other companies in the market um the inside gives you it he definitely fights them he gets the he gets a little bit of the best of jackson for a little bit he does his face ends up starting to fall apart balance does remember he's a cyborg they redid his story, so they re already reintroduced him too into canon. Uh, originally, it's the adaptation of Han Solo where he is, but he's I think he's the trooper there. And then the solo story, they still show him as a trooper because he's an imperial trooper and then converting. They then came out with the bounty hunter series. We were just talking about this cover. Man, I don't care. I know people knock it, I think people who don't have it knock it, but I really this was a beauty of a variant. I don't know what the price is. I, I've almost broke the piggy bank a couple of times and, and just went ahead and got this thing. Uh, and I just can't quite pull the trigger, but I really, I really like this cover. What are they uh, going for? I don't know. Uh, a nine, eight, uh, for a while it was up around five or 600, maybe higher, I think. Wow. And I think it might've took a dip. I think the one I almost pulled the trigger on was about, 450 or something and i just i'd already spent too much maybe that weekend or whatever and i just, I just couldn't do it. but yeah they're if it's graded to nine eight it's yeah they're commonly it's, around yeah. that four to five mark I, mm -hmm. I wish that i had one even though i truly just like this cover i i just i'm a completionist so that's know, a lego death card, man. Man. i just couldn't do that I, yeah. yeah i mean i have one but i didn't i didn't even pay ratio for it because this book was not when it first came out, they were kind of testing it into the market, and I don't think a lot of people saw it. And then by the third week, I heard that this cover – like, I just randomly bought this cover. I was like, you know, it's a cool cover. It's got Bosk on it and Boba. Like, I'll get it. And, uh, you know, this is not even – like, it wasn't even when he came back. You know what I mean? Like, the first one – the first series was when they were hunt, uh, hunt for Vader or whatever. Um, so then this was like – I don't know how people didn't know this was coming out. I think maybe thought that Valance wasn't going to be that popular, but with him merging with the rest of the bounty hunters, I mean, he runs into all the bounty hunters you love and know, 
all the ones that were in Empire. So I don't see why people weren't picking up that book, but they weren't, and the stores weren't already that well. So. There was a few people who were, and I mean, the book hit, you know, that twenty to forty dollar mark pretty fast. But then well, yeah, it was a wonder- for quite a while, and then like you were saying, overnight, man, it was just all. It went from like forty dollars to. Yeah. yeah, it went crazy. It went crazy. Oh, really like, oh wait, I missed it. I missed it. I gotta have it. FOMO, FOMO, and five hundred dollars <laughs> later. I'm really liking the story in this book, though. I yeah. love it, man. It's great. It, Valence, I was never introduced to him. We did that show on it, but um, so if if Jackson was gonna come back in a book in a serious way, man, they should somehow try to bring him in here. So I think if they bring him back, it might not be bad to either do an animated version of him or bring him back into like on Disney Plus, where Valance can show up in live action. Like, hey, Mark, Valance, do you have that uh, that realistic what Valance might look like picture? I do not have it loaded up. Okay, okay. but yeah, I mean, <laughs> check it out. He looks pretty badass. Yeah, I mean, they could definitely. There's definitely some stuff they could do with him. I like the character too. Like when it comes down to bounty hunters and his story. It's just great because they also, too, in the first, in the Marvel series, it's kind of changed a little bit, right? Like in the Marvel series, he was kind of just bad and bad and bad. In this new series, he's kind of he morally okay. Like he was trying to get everybody away from his original planet and his girlfriend wife type person and stuff like that and kind of felt bad. Then he tried to attack Vader and then thought, oh, I'm being set up. And I'm not going to go through what the whole Bounty Hunter series is about right now because it's still ongoing. I might start doing a little bit more review of books for after they come out so that we don't spoil it for stuff, but I won't do that here. Um, come on, la- spoil everything. Yeah, we do spoil a lot. It's so the dark the, side. So the last, so the last, so the last book and last character that I think might have a little bit of opportunity also from this Marvel series where we originally saw it is the Brie character. We talked about her in hand because she was technically kind of a hand to the Empire. She was like Luke's first girlfriend. Uh, they would play back and forth with each other. The one book that I really do love, by the way, that book's still, this book is still pretty cheap too. I think you can get a dollar of it. But this book over here is when she first becomes like the, I know it's kind of almost a theme now. We're doing like weird rabbits and uh, we're doing cyborg type characters with balance and, and Lou, Lumen, Lumini, whatever they change her name around. Here we go. Uh, the reason why I like this book though is not so much because she's a cyborg, but because of this page that's in this book or this little thing. <laughs> this Fanta, is Princess Leia. Fanta fodder. Ooh. Yeah. So wait, did someone throw that at her? Yes. Or did she like, okay. No, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not mud. You don't throw so that It is mud. They say it's mud, but yeah, it definitely looks like something that's not mud. <laughs> and they actually, they actually send her, they send the cyborg after her. At this point, she's got dark powers and she's like becoming kind of like a Darth Vader is apprentice slash Emperor's hand type figure. Uh, and she doesn't need any AirPods to listen to her music. No, she does though. I should have done the other pictures because he's <laughs> right. When you see Jackson, when you see the Jackson rendition of Jackson, which could be live action or whatever, it's really good. Same thing with balance. And they actually have one of her. She looks scary, man. She looks like she would come and force choke you out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think those three characters have got something to play. If you're going to do a lot of this stuff, like these are cool little books that even if you're not going to just buy them for this weird storylines, they all have weird storylines. Dude, she at one point was like almost the girlfriend to Luke and hanging out all the time, even though Leah was, Leia was really jealous she was hanging out with Luke. That whole storyline's crazy anyways. And then she turns into a cyborg and she's there to protect Leia while she's getting uh, mud thrown. And by the way, they don't even introduce that. It's the same character. How they j- introduce her, Luma, yeah. Is that how you say it? L-U-M-I- L. U M I Y A. They introduce her as that as a security force for this planet. And she's actually a dark side cyborg that originally was like hitting on Luke. I, it, look between that and Jackson and then Valance, like Valance's face is falling off. Literally half his face to show his cyborg part is falling off in one of these. Con- if you haven't read these, like go back and read them, man. They're definitely worth a read. Yeah. I know they have, I was going to say, there, there's one panel. I'm sorry to interrupt, man. No, there's one panel, one panel. And when I was doing my homework that, uh, that Marco assigned me uh, for this uh, Jackson thing, uh, there's one panel. So anyone so anyone that thinks that, that Han was head over heels for Leia immediately, love at first sight. Oh. No, uh, <laughs> you read those comics, you'll see not. 
And not only that, so that didn't really surprise me, but it's when Han was about to, to exit the cantina and he turned around to say something to Chewie and Chewie's got like a girl in each arm or something, right? <laughs> and I was like, damn, okay. So yeah, that's why you had the brethren. Chewie ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why he did. That's why he had the disco ball in the bedroom in the Chewie yeah. ship. These, these early Marvel books, people are sleeping on them. They're funny. Get them now before they get expensive because when they do, don't, I mean, don't be like, hey, they're expensive. I can't afford them now. Go out and find them, man. And you can find them. You can find them. They're still in bins because a lot of people are skipping over the Marvel stuff. I know everybody's buying everything, but they're in the dark horse right now. But if you could still get into that adventures area and get into that like new Marvel slash old Marvel area, it's worth it to pick it up to read the arcs. Both the non-canon now arcs of all three of these characters and the canon arcs of it. By the way, they changed Jackson around a little bit. But they didn't change him enough to uh, overdo it. Oh, and by the way, uh, girlfriend with the bikini is is back too, dude. She's pom -pom. uh pom pom she's, shoulders. Yeah, pom pom shoulders is uh, Mur or whatever her name is. She's back too, man. She is a hundred percent back and uh, in the little adventures thing too, which is why I think it's kind of funny. I don't know how they're exactly going to do her in the in a cartoon if they do, but. They've done weirder oh, things. A girlfriend or a sidekick to Jackson? She actually ran her own crew for a while uh, and then okay. became part of just the crew, which is weird. She all talked them. back to Valence in that panel there. She was like... Oh, she got all types of attitude. She does it with Hans, too. She she plays around with them a little bit. You know, They, they, they did a spinoff with her. It's called Dazzler. <laughs> 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 no, when Jedi says that there's some funny business with Han people, they very there that that could have been one of the ones that there was funny business with two going on and stuff like that. They it's it's the it's Marvel he's not on roller skates. The roller derby he was big. Like should be, right? Yeah. yeah, right. The Marvel runs on those were interesting to fill the gaps, like the storylines on them, and it's not like it stopped. Like all it was really gap filler till they could give you, you know, they would do New Hope. For what was it four or six? The first four or six was it six six, somewhere around there. First four, and then after that they would get away from it kind of, and they needed filler because then you had to have Empire, and then yep. you had to have Jedi. So I know you showed that book with Lando on the cover, and that was the first appearance of Luminaire. When did did the comic books have oh, any? Did Go they ahead. have any um, preview of Empire before Empire came out? Any characters, or there was nothing in the comics. No, there wasn't anything in the comics. Actually, kind of funny because I think, what is it, Zuckus is technically in, and people are still calling it Forlow because they mispronounced him and called him Forlow in that Bounty Hunter book, 64 or whatever it is, the one where all three of them went Bosk. And uh, and I think a lot of people still call it Forlow, and it's technically Zuckus, isn't it? Zuckus. Forlom. 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 And Forlom doesn't show up till way later. Uh, and the guy said it before. He's like, it's not. We, they screwed up the names at Kenner because of the toy, right? Like. Z they, they switched to Zuckus and yep. and we did so then everybody would screw him up. I still screw him up every once in a while, but yep, me too. Yeah, I mean, because the bug eyed one that kills almost everybody is Zuckus, yeah, and the other one is Forlorn. So, uh, in the tan outfit, and and to this day, people still I don't even know if CGC has got it right yet. I'd have to look at that. If they people in the comment, I bet you we're gonna get JJ Maxwell and Patrick right now are gonna be like, they got it right on the CGC thing, but whatever. I mean, well, I just know like Jedi Johnson, man. I knew the names from the toys. Right. I had no idea. Like Bosk, first time I knew his name was when I got my little my action figure. So when they swapped Forlom and Zuckus, that was it for me. Yeah, yeah, that was. I mean, that was a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people were the same way. So that's how they referred to it. Um, See, but anyway, do the name Lobot. <laughs> yeah, Lobot. Lobot's funny. Lobot's got some good arcs in this storyline too. Obviously, he tries to punch out a double-handed fist like a wrestling move. Oh, yeah. They really love the roller derby and wrestling moves in some of these oh, books. Yeah. I'll tell you that. And some of the lines. Some of the lines are definitely shoots. I mean, they're definitely great. And uh, There's no comic here. books like late 70s. That just, yeah. Oh, we have, we have one more thing, unless you guys have another. See, Jedi sent me something in the mail, and it turned out right here. Do you have something real quickly, Solo, or no? It kills me on those books if you look at them. I actually, my best friend owned a bicycle shop for a while, and on those covers, oh, it Columbia. always plays me about the Schwinn. Win a Schwinn Columbia bike. Schwinn. Yes. It really, it really dates the, oh, it's the 10 speed. It's the new big 10 speed. 10 speeds back then were the new biggest thing. Yep. It wasn't the, the, uh, the, 
muscle bikes with the shifter on on the on that all the boys were riding. It was the new ten speed. So the that's and if you just, sold enough seeds like, on the back cover, you could get the ten speed and your your uh, boom box and <laughs> yeah, it kills me. Well, so this is just a happy coincidence. But uh, last night I had a package outside. And I was like, who sent me a package? And then I forgot the Jedi sent me a package. So we're also going to have an opening on this. Uh, we're going to have see what Jedi sent me, and he can tell us what he uh... – All right, let's see what we got here. Screen on this, Marco. What's that? Oh, yeah, I should go full screen on mm -hmm. okay. I'll edit my little – No, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Full screen it is. All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh, cool. Oh, no way, dude. So uh, I remember you telling me that, that your son liked yes. uh, Darth Maul. He does. And, uh, yeah, so I had that, and it wasn't uh, – Darth wasn't doing anything but hanging out in my closet. So uh, oh, man, that's, that's, yeah, that's cool. Neat. And then uh, – so had I known oh, – no, no, so, so this this is the actual one. So this is the actual Darth Maul that he broke. This is the hard one to get. This is the Darth Maul that he broke, and in in the package is becoming more and more popular. No, is that, um, that the sixteen inch? Oh no, wait! This is the other one. This is the split one. Oh, you know which one this is? You ready? This is the Han Solo one, or not Han Solo? This is the Obi Kenobi one. Hold on, hold on. The one that he cuts in half. Right? Yeah. Is that? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Fine. That is awesome. All right. Can you get separate robo leg attachment for that? That would be. Oh, good. dude, that's cool. He's gonna love that. Sold separately. Uh, yeah. Wow. And then sold awesome. separately. Oh my god, dude. All right, cool. So you got four proof of purchases. You can uh, sorry. So, so if you need to know who the most popular character is in, uh, very simple. Han Solo is the greatest hero of Star Wars. Uh, nothing could have happened without him. Oh man, this is cool. It's still got so, it too. Is that is uh, that the model or the action the the uh, eighteen inch? This is the ninety six where they did the this is the ninety six where they did the packaging of the reprints for the sixteens. Okay. So Marco, I don't know if you can uh, share the camera with me, but had I known that we were going to do an open uh, uh, an on the uh, on the air, so to speak, opening, I would have probably sent you. This oh, no, no, no. You did all right. You did all right. I'll, so, I'll take this one. You sure? Yeah, no, this is good. This all is right. Good. Maybe, we'll do, maybe we'll do a giveaway or something with this one in the, in the awesome. future, man. That's cool, man. You know, the funny thing about these, all right, is, is when you used to go to Celebration or to some of the toy store, toy shows, these ones start the, the, the Darth Maul ones that are in... The next series up starts to get popular about two years or so ago. Where do I have one of those? Oh, it's up on the upper shelf. Uh, I still haven't gone through it. Yeah. You know what? He keeps my son keeps going to play with all. I know. Is he going black series? Is he going no, Force Unleashed? Series. What's he gonna? What's he oh, gonna hold on? Out? Hold on! Hold on! Do it, should we give him a drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> it's on took it again. So this series right here, probably, pro probably a couple of years ago, you could find them forever. And then this series right here started to get pretty popular. Oops. You know what I mean? Like it just started to get popular and you couldn't find them anymore. The Barbie yeah. doll of Star Wars. Right. Um, but now those ones are just going crazy. But even when you could find those, these were our, these were like the first ones, the 96s were the first ones where you knew something was going on with Star Wars. And it was before this whole Mandalorian thing and everything else. Because these started popping off shelves and the prices of them started getting bigger. And then about two years ago, the prices on these, just certain figures, like Darth Maul figure. Um, based certain Queen Amidala's. Not Queen Amidala, dude. You can There's a couple of those Queen Amidala's. There are not a lot of them. And now they're getting a yeah. big giant headdress. Those are starting to go up. I yeah, it's no crazy idea. how much they're going up. But like no, you start seeing no those go up. Idea why. Oh. You know, I've never bought. I saw these and I just I kicked myself because I never bought one of these Jedi. Which one is it? Because there's these right here where you put together the the metal earth stuff. All right, let me let me if I'm if I may, I got to tell you. Go so what I want you to do, man, is is you you choose your partner, whoever you want to be. Put that sob together, okay. and uh, I, I want to see it. And 
if you can do a good job on it, I'll send you this one, which is the Millennium Falcon. Oh, okay. But I don't want. I don't want to send this to just anybody until I know that they can put those things together. And here's why: me and my buddy on Christmas, uh, Christmas not several years ago, tried to put together R two D two. And my buddy's almost as big as I am, so you know we were huddled over this thing, and you you can't use, you know, there's no tools or any, anything required, no glue, and I mean it, we were doing surgery on this thing, and before you know it, we're grabbing tweezers, and you know he's like forceps and all this kind of stuff, scalpel, and we're trying to put this thing together. So this is the result of this is R two D two that we put together, yeah, and. Let me tell you, there's more glue on this son of a gun than I. <laughs> I don't that know. Cool, though. It's like a pure yeah. statue. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, um, somewhere it's around held together here. with. It's held together with love. That's all. How, it's how heavy is that thing? Oh, it's light. It's very yeah, thin it's metal. It's, very, it's like tin metal. almost. Yeah, yeah, it's very thin. Yeah, I was around here. I have an AT-AT and I have a Tie Fighter that I put together, and I have every other one of those. That they came out with, and they're all in package. Hmm. You, That's cool. You man. put them together successfully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, ju- know, yeah. Jewelry players. I highly suggest jewelry players. Yeah, it's. I'll, I'll never try again. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> Did you grade this yourself? No, no, I, I bought that, and let me tell you, that's uh, that's another one of those. Uh, you know, sentimental things that I pick up too, because I remember, you know, that came in the Wonder Bread loaves, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom, my mom didn't buy Wonder Bread, but my grandma did. And me and my brother would go through that, and my I can I can still hear my grandma yelling, "Who keeps oh, who keeps opening up all the loaves of bread?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me, and my, me and my brother were just trying to grab those things, and you know, they're. They're they're relatively cheap too. I'm sure they you know produce thousands and thousands yeah. of them, but the, they're just they're just the fun to look at. What's the grade? Yeah, I think that's eight. It's near mint. Mint. Nine. Near mint. Maybe. If I remember that correctly, Jedi, I was I was only about eight. I remember going to the store and feeling. I don't know why. I don't know if there wasn't labeling, but I was feeling the bread to make sure they had the card in it on the side. Yeah, thing. well, yeah, yeah, it was just inside the, the plastic. Yeah, yeah, people would open the packs, yep. pull out the cards, and then. I mean, it's a twist tie, dude. Like, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I know. Really really open it. So I, I, I remember that clearly, like, going through five or six of them before one had a card in it. People were just mm-hmm. stealing them. Not to mention. Yeah, I mean, not everybody, bread. not everybody got Wonder Bread at home. Sometimes you got whatever was the uh, whatever the bread was on sale. So yeah, you had, 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 had a card to Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you were one of those Wonder Bread guys that were. I'm not there. saying I was. I'm just saying that's how it happens. <laughs> Jedi, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate it. those. Are all great, man. Those are awesome. I didn't deserve them, but thanks, man. That's really cool. All Side right. Note with a single mom growing up at the time we were living in North Dakota, and you didn't want to spend a bunch of money on galoshes for your kids because they just outgrown grown them. So you just bought Wonder Bread and they wore the bags around their shoes. And so <laughs> nice. Good old North Dakota winners. <laughs> That's your dry. Yeah, it gets it going. Hey, Jedi, we're going to have to have you back around some other time. I really do appreciate you coming out. You know, I really do. I appreciate everything. We've talked about it before. You were one of the first people to reach out to me and tell me how, you know, you you like what we were doing and everything else and to keep it up. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, that means a lot, dude. Because, like, you don't, you know, it is what it is. But I'm I glad. Couldn't wait. couldn't wait to watch the show as soon as I heard about it. Oh, dude, that's so cool, man. But All right. Yeah, Jedi, if I knew you were an Adrian's a med fan, we would have called you months ago. <laughs> we truly have the greatest fans on this on this show, man. I, do. I yeah. love you guys. You guys are the greatest in the chat, and and keep it up and help correct us and and pronunciation. They correct us. They don't correct us. They correct me. Let's get it straight. They correct me a lot, and it's all right. We're, we're we're right. right. Chat, Jedi. Well, yeah, no, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate everything. I appreciate you sticking with us. That yeah, man, it's just fun to see somebody and then have you on like that. It was cool. I loved your video that you sent in. Like I was already, you know, I, I've already tried. We had uh, Stick Boy here too. Like anybody else, there's a lot of you guys that have been around with us for a long time. I think we're going into like almost. We gotta be going click close to the sixth month of doing this, um, and it's cool to see everybody still stick around and everybody just get involved. So um, keep sending the videos. Uh, everybody else, leave the comments if you guys want to reach out to me. Um, you know, we'll we'll bring more people on. We'll definitely have Jedi Johnson back. 
uh, for nothing else update. to have an up, update on how the hat's coming along and, and everything. I'll let like you know. Uh, I'll let you know the latest messages from beyond. I'm sure. Hey, one more far. question. One more question because I saw it. You know, I look at everybody's background. So, what's up with the crooked uh, Star Wars one? Oh uh, no, man, that's by design. That's oh. uh, yeah. I, I I just liked it like that. I don't know. Oh, you got you got the Black Series Bubble Fett helmet too, and you put together the Legos, huh? Yeah, that, that was a story. I know we don't have time for it today. No, we do. Go I, ahead. We well, I got to hear it. Yeah, now you, say, you can't bring that up and not say it. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, the uh, the Boba Fett. Uh, so I'm not a I'm not a big Lego guy. I think I think growing up I had Tinker Toys. So I, I chose I chose T, Team Tinker Toys at an early age, probably. So, and I don't think I, my kids might have had uh, my kids might have had Legos. I don't remember, but um, so. You know the Lego cartoon, the Lego shows and stuff. I I, I never watched them, and uh, but I was at Target, and this is right before this past Christmas, and I was looking at this this Boba Fett helmet Lego thing, and I guess my wife saw me looking at it, and I, like I told you before, Marco, I'm an easy guy to shop for Christmas. If it's Boba Fett or Chewbacca, I'm all smiles. I'm just giggling. It's, you know, I just love it. So. I guess my wife calls my son, you know, the, the oldest one I was telling you about, the Star Wars guy. He says, you think your dad would like this? He goes, yeah, yeah, I can get it for him. So I never put one of these things together in my life, but I, I, I opened it. I was like, oh, this ought to be fun. And But I, I didn't realize how <laughs> – I did not realize how organized this thing is. I did not realize, you know, these things come in bags, man. These things, oh, some, yeah. an, an idiot like me can, you know, do these things. So, so I open up the first bag and I'm putting it together and I'm like, you know, I finished the first bag and I'm all accomplished and I run downstairs. I show, look, that's my wife. I was like, look at this. And she's like, what the hell is that? I was like, it's going to be Boba Fett. She said, like, well, come back when it looks like Boba Fett. So I was like, all right. So I'm up there and I'm, I'm putting together, <laughs> put together the other bags, man. And it's just slowly come together and, uh, you know, finally got that fifth, you know, I think it was five or six bags. I don't remember. And, uh, ran downstairs. Like I, I'm talking, I ran downstairs like a little child showing off, you know, something that they had made or whatever. I was like, look at this thing. And she's like, okay, what are you going to do with it? I'm, like, I'm going to show it off. I think it's going to be in my man cave. And, uh, so I wanted to do, I think about doing the others, but I heard there's stickers involved in some of the others, and I'll screw up stickers. Yeah. I'll, I'll mess those up. So I'm, I'm happy with both of that. But yeah, so I, I, I kind of retract all my negative energy that I've given Legos over the years. And uh, because I had a ball, I had a ball putting that thing together. It was so much fun. If you if you if you're thinking about doing it, go out and get one if you can find one. It's and and put it together because it was a blast. If you're ever in Michigan, uh, Jedi, come on over. We got lots of Legos for you yeah. to build. <laughs> I'll tell you this, too, with the sticker thing. I'm the same way because I was always messing them up, especially on the toys, you know, like G.I. Joe's and Star Wars had stickers sometimes. Well, Star Wars did on some of the play sets. But I, and I would always mess them up. But now with how they're doing Legos, it's easier to put the stickers on because they – it's pretty much. I don't understand why they don't do it themselves, but it's pretty much. There's only one place to put it, and you got to put it on. Like there's, yep. There's no room to get around it. There's no yeah. extra. So it, it is weird though. They print some on blocks, and other ones they do stickers, and there's no rhyme or reason. I don't know. All right. Well, hey, it was great having you out. Uh, I don't even know what we're checking out anymore. We were just. I'm lost in this whole interview. I got to rewatch it because it was just so amazing. It was great to have Jedi out. So, Wookie, just take us out of here. Tell them how to being and what and do that type of thing. All right, everybody. Please uh, stop by. Um, uh, geez, my brain's dead. <laughs> Bird City Comics. Uh, code D-A-R-K-S-H-D-E for 15% off. They have some great new books over there. Please, everybody, go check them out. I promise you'll enjoy it. Please go over and hit up the Comic Barricades with their new XLs. Use the code FLIPSIDE for 10% off to fight those dreaded spine ticks. Then mosey on down and force push the like and subscribe. Hit us up on Instagrams, Tales from the Dark Side underscore PDCST for podcast then saber strike that bell so you can be alarmed every time 
the greatest Star Wars conversation happens this side of the galaxy. May the Force be with you. Always. Always. All right. Fat Club. Oh. Yeah, Fat Club.